Friday, the 8th of September, I remember it well, the day Nanuri came into my life. I read the news that the world's first AI pop star, Nanuri, has just signed a deal with Warner Music. I am sure everyone there is incredibly proud of themselves. Warner, the corporate mega-giant record label, who over the years have released records from Eagles, ACDC, Dua Lipa, Nile Rodgers, The Black Keys and Fleetwood Mac, have decided to sign what's been described as the world's first AI pop star, for reasons known only to them. Money. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Before you ask, why? Why, Mary, are you giving this totally dispiriting, ridiculous story any airtime at all? Shouldn't you just keep singing songs? And you might be right. I'm fully aware that even bringing this up just adds more eyes on something that, frankly, deserves to be seen by no one at all. Maybe I'm playing right into Warner's hands because we all know any publicity is good publicity. But I have a point to make, so stick around. And if you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing because, good lord, do I need the help now more than ever. And I actually think this might be the reason some artists are cashing in and selling their catalogues. The news has just dropped that Katy Perry has reportedly sold her catalogue rights for $225 million. Maybe she knows something we don't. So, Nanuri is the creation of the German fashion designer Jörg Zuber. She is a computer-generated artist, model, virtual influencer, and self-described fashion icon with an AI-generated singing voice. She collaborates with top brands and magazines like Vogue China, Cosmopolitan India, Glamour Brazil or Trasadi. She also uses her reach to bring awareness to environmental issues, giving her a deeper meaning in the virtual influencer world. Smiley face. Now, Nanuri starts her music career, literally giving a voice to the voiceless. Zuba, in an interview with The Telegraph, said, It is a dream come true. From the age of five, I had always wanted to communicate my dreams and ideas. In 2018, I brought out Nanuri for the first time. This new step is very exciting and such an honour. Warner approached me about making music. I look forward to doing more in future. Now, humans have sought to communicate their dreams and ideas with their art throughout history. Nothing new there. And this song was not written by AI. It's been co-written by Committee, German DJ Al Farben being the main collaborator. It was also, by the looks of it, actually performed by a human singer first. The instruments have been played by humans too, and the dancing done by a bearded man in a motion capture suit. You sort of wonder whether the first true AI pop star shouldn't be entirely generated by AI, visually and musically, not partially. But, you know, news headlines need a snappy title. Nanuri herself has since rode back a little bit, saying she's a CGI pop star, not AI. Over on Nanuri's Instagram, someone writes, Music plays a big role in my life since the beginnings. It sets me into the mood and nourishes my visions and ideas to bring them to life as a driving force inside of me. Warner Music is the home of a lot of my fave music artists. I cannot be more thankful and honoured to join such a wonderful family where music tunes are the beat of life. I completely agree. Music tunes are the beat of life, aren't they? Obviously, there's been a lot of media attention. This is from an article in Forbes for a music company like Warner. It's easy to see the appeal. Nanuri, the creation of artist Jörg Zuba, won't get worn out from touring and promoting her music, and she can be restyled in seconds to keep in step with changing teen trends. And if she makes it to superstar status, she won't start making diva-like demands or demand an enormous pay rise. Cool, absolutely nothing worth commenting on there, is there? Moving on, Nanuri is pitched as being politically active. She has spoken out on issues including veganism, animal cruelty, anti-racism, and LGBT rights. I just, I mean, where to begin? There's just so much wrong with this, isn't there? Pitched as being politically active, as if an artist's thoughts and opinions should be decided by focus group, depending on how they poll with audiences. There's no courage of conviction, no standing up for what you believe in, no risk, no feeling. When I think about every human being who was moved to put pen to paper or words to music because they needed to express what they felt burning within them, 
It just feels dystopian as hell, and I usually try to be positive, but the song's awful, just so generic, just filler, cliched, forgettable, no pain, no joy, just bland nothingness. And my worry is that you might not even notice if this played on the radio. Now, imagine for a second that you're a Warner artist, a human Warner artist. Let's say, let's say you're Dua Lipa. First of all, lucky you, love your work. I would be curious to know what you and other artists on Warner feel about your new label mate. I would be curious how you feel knowing that valuable time and resources are being directed at promoting Nanuri. How would you feel knowing that labels are excited at the thought of removing the artist's need for sleep? emotional support, fair payment, and so on, in order to maximise their profits. Because this is what Warner wants you to listen to. Nanuri, 24-7, Nanuri, no sleep, just Nanuri, no breaks, Nanuri, in the gym, in the car, in the club, Nanuri. Sounds great, you say. I can't see anything wrong with it. All above board. We're each entitled to our own opinion, of course. You might say that anyone, human, or non-human that promotes certain values like equality or LGBT rights to receptive audiences is a good thing. That may well be true, but this story has confirmed what I've always thought, that no one cares about you and your work more than you do, that mega labels view artists as the product, nothing more, that artists need to build their own networks and support systems and not rely on anyone else other than their true fans. If that means you don't have the same reach as a super huge label, that's okay. I'm not the only one who thinks this way. The late great Jimmy Buffett gave a talk seven years ago to the American Library in Paris about leaving his label and keeping his independence. Content is still king. And if you can create stuff, you know, and, and uh, it's still, there's, whatever the technology is, they still need us. And that's what I try to tell kids out there. But be smart about it, and if you can, work for yourself so that you can, you can be yourself. And not take, you know, not take the bait and get thrown into the tank with the rest of the tuna. <laughs> Stay out there and swim. That's advice that bears repeating. Talent and content is king. Put in the work and perfect your artistry. Work for yourself and don't get thrown into the tank with the rest of the tuna. If you can make a living from your creativity and you don't have to answer to anyone, then that's a win and absolutely possible. I want what I do to be the blueprint for other artists to take control of their creativity, find their audience and build a direct connection with them. I've been thinking about this for a while. I know that some of you watching are musicians starting out on your own journeys and I want to help however I can. And some of you are passionate fans who want to use their skills to help build a new kind of music industry. So I'm starting a newsletter separate to my own monthly updates called The 21st Century Musician, where I can put some of these thoughts down on paper. This will be an independent, artist-focused newsletter where I write about the lessons I've learned on my own journey, how to take control of your career, how to independently release your music and build your audience. It's about the business side of music as much as the creative side, because the more control you have over your career, the better off you will be, now more than ever. I also want it to be responsive to today's issues. So if you sign up, you can reply to each newsletter with your own suggestions, questions, and burning topics. And I'll do my best to incorporate them into future newsletters. It's free to sign up. This is about sharing knowledge, giving other emerging artists a platform, and just trying to do the right thing. Because if we don't look out for each other, then no one else will. So thank you for listening to this rant. Please do comment. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts. If you're interested in the newsletter, I have put a link in the description, so why not try signing up? And as always, I'll be seeing you here again really very soon. And I promise to, yeah, maybe start singing a little bit more in a real human kind of way. Okay, over and out.